Several months back, I did a reading for Hillary's niece on Long Island. She had said, if you're ever in LA, I have a group of friends that would love to have a greeting. You're so you, it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are in LA doing a group reading for Hillary's friends. As I start to give my speech, that is my sign to your loved ones that I am ready to work. What they do is they start to clear out my own personal thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and they start to replace them with signs and symbols of things that I've experienced here in the physical world to be able to relay messages to you. So um, I am gonna first st start off by saying, um, I'm gonna apologize because it, you lost your sister. Um, she told me that I acted weird when I hugged you. And I said, I did? And she goes, yes, you looked at my sister weird. I actually thought that when you hugged me, that you hugged me weird. Because <laughs> I wanted to take you and look at you and go, oh my God, you smell delicious. Oh. Like, oh my God, I love, 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 love your perfume. <sighs> and then it was like, something shut me down, and that's when I think the weirdness happened. Teresa, the perfume I'm wearing is Soul Sister, and I, um, it was my sister's favorite, and it goes to her charity. She told me that you feel her all yes. the time, and you sense her here, and there are a lot of times you talk to her, and then you're like, oh my God, I'm crazy. She goes, Teresa, she will sit there and have a full conversation yes. with me, and then go, I'm crazy. That really didn't happen. I just did that today. So know that when these things happen, mm -hmm. Know that her soul is with you at that exact moment, but more importantly, that she hears you. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if I should say this. Is it, are we, we're, uh, who was the Power Ranger? Oh, <gasps> <shit>. <gasps> oh, God, but I don't know. Do you know that I stood online for those freaking swords at three o'clock in the morning at Christmas I'm in the sorry. freezing cold <laughs> for the white one? I had a, the white one. No, 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 no. That was the one that I stood in the, the oh, three o'clock in the morning. The sword, I'll never forget that. I know it was like green, blue, and red were his favorite. I'm blue. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Can I, can I, can I just FaceTime my son? Because of course. I, so you were the? The Blue Ranger. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, I'm gonna be the best mother right now. Okay, so what was your favorite thing growing up? Yes! Woo! What color Power Ranger was your favorite? Oh, the Green Ranger. No! Well, second, second, second to green. <laughs> it's the blue one! Ah! Sorry, I'm not your favorite, Larry. Go, go, Power Rangers, right? <laughs> See? Too Very funny. funny. How funny was that? So, um, they tell me I'm over here on this side. Um, My name is Christopher Atkins. I uh, live in Los Angeles. You probably know me best from the movie The Blue Lagoon. I was the guy in the diaper chasing Brooke Shields down the beach. I kind of believe in mediums and I kind of don't believe in mediums, um, but it's nice to, you know, prove it to me. And I'm gonna ask you, who was the father that's departed for you? Because he said to me, I had the privilege of being his dad. That was my stepfather. Okay. So know that he's stepping forward. Oh, good. Um, he said to me, did you try to play baseball or something? <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very much. Now you're getting really weird, okay? <laughs> I know, I'm sure you've heard this before. Heard it before, it... nothing new. Okay, okay. I was gonna play pro baseball, was my dream. I had a, a hitting coach tell me that the Phillies were gonna draft me, but I had all these knee operations, so I missed out. But there was a really uh, interesting baseball connection for when he died. Okay. Because my son was playing college ball in North Carolina. I got a phone call while, while just the family was sitting around the bed when he was dying. I answered it and it was screaming and yelling. And I said to my dad, Grant just got the game winning hit and I know he did it for you. And everybody who loves you the most is sitting around the bed right now. I said, it doesn't get any better than this. And my mom leaned into him and said, it's a good time to go and he died. Wow. And that's a true story. My stepfather was uh, one of the greatest human beings on the planet. Even my father, who I loved to death, said to me that he didn't think he could have raised us as well as my stepfather did. He raised me literally since I was like nine years old, and it was all baseball. 
It was all baseball. And of course, Teresa comes out of nowhere and she says, baseball. And I'm like, oh, come on. How do you, how do you know baseball? Now that she would never know. She would never know that. Do you also have his hat? Oh yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Is it like really worn? Oh yeah. You know, I got to say that Ron Howard. Ron Howard, you ever see him wear that baseball? And he, that's what he showed me. That's what I got to say. Uh, All worn. <laughs> he, had a, he, he had a picture of me and Ron Howard sitting on the... the what? 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 Ah, no! Yeah. You know Ron Howard? I did a, a, a celebrity softball game with him. You're freaking me out. <laughs> it's not me! <laughs> oh, you're melting me. <laughs> Larry, I'm sorry, Larry. I'm sorry. You're gonna get me just, in trouble. Just, I'm sorry, Larry. She is just the sweetest, most fun, wonderful, crazy lady. Seeing this kind of stuff and then it actually happening to me is just magic. How do you connect with the number 57? Would it be the age, the age that they would be? Oh, man, I don't know. I'm gonna pass on it because I can't misinterpret numbers. So I pass on numbers if you can't connect with it right away. So did somebody pass on music? I don't know what that means. My so let's just dad. hypothetically, and then, oh. The my dad. dad, my dad was a musician, so. Oh, perfect. And that your dad is departed as well, correct? At 57. <gasps> wow. Oh my, my name is Nika Costa and I'm from Los Angeles. I'm a singer and I make soul, funk, rock music and tour all over the world. My dad was a musical arranger. He's a very sweet and gentle man that everyone loved. And uh, he died when I was 10. He keeps bringing me over to a piano bench and there's all sheets of music and writing and you found things that you didn't even know was in there from your father. And I felt like there, can I use the quote, love notes. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Were you going to try to um, give them then to someone who sings? I'm going to sing them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you're like a real singer, singer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of all the songs that I could have found, he did hundreds of arrangements. I found the one song that is one of my favorites. It's one I've sung to my kids every night. Like, it's not just some random one from like the vault. It's like a really special one. All right, let's see how my Italian blood is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was nervous competing against them, but I never said I didn't know how to play. <laughs> that was way too hard. Look. Yeah? Yeah, baby! Woohoo! Look, I grew up playing bocce ball, and let me tell you, I'm here representing Long Island. Hey. Hello. Hello. Yes! Woohoo! Yeah! Hello. Woo! Oh, nice. That's how it's done. Saying you weren't competitive? I'm not competitive <laughs> at all. Not one bone That's in my body. But. <laughs> well, um, um, I talk to dead people. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> like a seance? No, <laughs> not like a seance. I'm able to communicate with people that have crossed over. Okay. Wow. So, but they, there is a father figure that's stepping forward that is departed. No, my, my is your dad, dad departed? Yeah. Yep. I'm John, I live right in the neighborhood, right across the street. Do you have the picture of him with the, um, he keeps showing me him standing there holding a long fish. He was a fisherman. We had, uh, when I was growing up, he, yeah. <laughs> he, he built a house down near Long Beach Island, which my mom lives in now, and oh. yeah, there's tons of pictures. So we specifically talking about the hunting rifles. Do you still have his, his rifles? Uh, until very recently, yes. Perfect. He showed me the whispering of the ear and snapped his fingers, which means that his passing was sudden and or unexpected. Now, did you not get the opportunity to say goodbye to your dad? Uh, my dad died suddenly from a hunting accident. My dad was walking out of the woods at the end of an evening from hunting. Another hunter uh, mistook him for a deer and shot him with a bow and arrow and killed him. It's like the first bow hunting fatality in over 100 years in the state of New Jersey. So it was, a, it was a rather freak accident. He showed me 1896. I don't know what that means. So can you connect with the number 18 and the number 96? My dad died when I was 18. I was a freshman in college. So he died in 96. To lose your dad when you're at the point where you're like, wow, now I can really, 
I can start to talk to you man to man. And that was, you know, that took some dealing with. It's just your dad taking this opportunity to let you know that anything and everything that you said to him, he heard in your own personal thoughts and or prayers and doesn't want you to feel that nothing was left unsaid. He has always been with you after all these years and knows of the man that you've become and now an amazing father. Possibility that, you know, my father is able to, to be here and to see my family and, and to see Adam, it tugs at your heart to think, you know, if it's possible, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, thank you very much. I hope so. Nice meeting you. Oh, very nice right. to meet you. You're so handsome. <laughs> oh, you're a flirt. Not only are you handsome, you're a flirt. I come into contact with skeptics on a daily basis, but I will never forget one of my biggest skeptics that I met during a restaurant cleansing. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? How are I'm you? Teresa. Cyrus, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I just had to revisit him to see what has happened since we last met. Hi, Cyrus. The charlatan is here. Bloody hell, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Very so nice good. to see you. Fantastic. You look great. Fantastic. I have the same shoes, you by the way. You do? Yeah, I was going to wear them today. I, but... I... but it was raining? Yes. <laughs> Come on in. My name is Cyrus. I live in Babylon, New York. And in July 2012, I had an unexpected chance encounter with Teresa Caputo. I will be more than happy to sage the establishment. You want to just uh, yeah. take a look around yeah, and we'll sure. see maybe what's going on? Yeah, that's grunge. How has it been since our little encounter? <laughs> I, I just, I love that because you're like, here she's, you called creature. me a creature. Yes, I yes, did, with creature. the hair and the nails. Yes. When you see this little creature with the hair and the nails going through your restaurant, blowing sage with a feather, cleansing us, yeah, that's all a lo load of bollocks to me. You know, pardon my French. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, what? you have a lot of ardent supporters on Long Island because after the show aired, a lot of people would come up to me, they'd like sneak up from behind me and like admonish me. How dare you disagree with Teresa? You know that she's telling the truth. And I said, I'm sorry, I was being honest. And as a result of your meeting, I had a rather interesting encounter with Billy Joel. No, are you kidding and so me? So this is one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Wait, what happened? Um, what do you mean? The restaurant I was running is right next to uh, one of his properties. And so I take them to a table and Billy Joel looks straight up at me and he goes, you, you were on the Long Island Medium. <laughs> we just watched that episode again and you were a skeptic, but now you believe, don't you? That is amazing. But that's great, though. I feel like I've been reliving that episode every time I go somewhere. But it was quite liberating to be able to talk to somebody and to be able to discuss things that perhaps you wouldn't be comfortable with before. Was someone hit by a car? 14 years ago, my best friend was killed in a car accident. That's it. My friend, Mariana, she was like an older sister to me and we lost her at a, at a very young age, and it devastated me. A lot of people, after we experience a death, a loss, no matter who it is, all we know is grief. And in your case, all you knew was grief, but that grief shut down a part of your soul. How unfortunate is that? Because she makes me feel like that you kind of keep people at a safe distance, uh, emotionally and don't let people in, is that correct? Because she says you deserve to be happy. There are so many people that love you and, and but want to love you, but you keep them at that safe distance. Story of my life. So please, that she wants you to be able to allow someone in to love you the way that you deserve to be. In front of so many people, I was able to talk about something that was so deep Mm -hmm. and something that I'd covered up and something that I'd never really talked about. Sure. And I think my encounter with you, for better or worse, yeah. has given me that, that ability to uh, communicate deeper with other people. To actually hear and to see the change in someone is uh, something that's priceless. It's great. That's amazing. The couple of minutes that it took for her to communicate a message that I'd needed to hear for a decade and a half has changed my life. 
and I don't say that lightly. You have a beautiful soul. And that I appreciate. And now you being able to really remember her in a different way just continues to validate for me that this is my soul's journey here in the physical my world. My name is Kim Whitley. I am an actress and a comedian. I have a show on right now called Young and Hungry and a show called Raising Whitley. Well, who was the cousin that died? You have oh, the cousin that died? Beatrice, she just died recently. Did you not, whose funeral did you not get to go to? Or wait? We didn't plan her funeral or we didn't give her a wake. B, we didn't do, it was just a lot just to get her packed up. And we, we, we have not had a funeral for her. So know that she says that it's OK, Oof. that there was no attendance for my memorial yet. Yes. But there is going to, she says, there is going to be a, a service. Yes, B, of course. But she made me feel it was going to be more of, of the anniversary of her departure. That sounds about right. We were going to do something like at a family reunion Perfect. and have a big memorial. She says that is fine. Ooh. OK, thank you. That was she said, burden. because what's important is that, mm. she said, with my death, we, there were reconnections within the family. Yes. She there says, were. and I will take that over a wake or a funeral. Yes. There were. There were some wounds and things mended. And, and now it's all. She says, and that is always what I wanted. Wow. There was a mother energy that stepped forward. Actually, yes. there were three of those souls that stepped forward. Yep. Hey, Mom. <laughs> I knew you was going to be here. <laughs> she just said to me, you don't know what you're in for. <laughs> Your mother said, I shoot straight from the hip. They're going to be none of that praising the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. That is her. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Spirit has to communicate with personality because I feel that's the best validation for you that your loved ones are safe and at peace, that their soul is completely healed. Um, so, um, uh, how do you connect with the number two or the month of February? February, uh, my mother's birthday. Okay. It's February. My mom was funny, loving, and extremely beautiful. She loved fashion. I always compared her to Jackie O growing up. My mom was my best friend. I'm the only girl in the family, so me and my mom were tight all the way to the end. You have a, a child? I do. She made me feel like that uh, you're, you have one child? One child. That Boy. she made me feel like that he is the miracle baby. He is the miracle baby. Yeah, but your mom says he saved you in a sense. He did. No, he saved Through me. his, through your mom's death? You're not going to mess up my makeup, first of all. Oh, wow. I'm sorry for kind of bringing you back to that moment. How do you connect with the number six? She died six months later. He was six months old, six months later. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because your son helped you heal the loss of your mom. And he continues yes, to give no you way. that gift. There's no way I would have. I don't know how Teresa knows these things. It's very strange. Because certain things Teresa can't know. There is no way Teresa would know that my mother would die six months after Joshua was born. I can't explain it. I know that there was a reason that they crossed paths, that Joshua was brought to me so that my mother can go on. And every time I would hear him cry, I would be ready to keep moving in life. But I miss my mom every day. I wanted my mother to, to see him grow up. And you know, you need your mom. Because I didn't you know you don't, you don't know how to do everything. You know, we get sick. You know, you want to call your mom and say, hey. She says he's going to be somebody. He's going to change the world. Because she made me feel like that your son really is a gift from God to you. How he came to me, so you don't even know any of that. He was given to me. He's given to me. He is definitely a gift from God. 
I knew a young lady that I had been mentoring. Obviously, she was pregnant. Um, she had the baby, and she knew she couldn't care for him, so she left my name and number at the hospital and left. The hospital called me, and they're like, um, we got a baby here for you, and I thought it was a joke, and hung up. And the lady called and said, no, we really have a baby here, and he was four days old. I remember being really afraid, and uh, my mom was like, why not? And I went and got Joshua, and right there, laid out with a bow, here's your son, it's gonna change your life. And he changed my life. I see her, I just watched her walk three times past outside. So I, she watches over. So if you ever see a shadow. Yes. I saw my mother in my child's baby monitor, bending mm -hmm. over his bed on his first birthday. Mm -hmm. You know, just the things and him talking to her, I was like, like, I didn't believe in any of this. Then my son saw her, he was talking to her. He was two, three, and he said, KK, KK. And then I felt that she had left. So she was here, literally. What happens is that they show themselves to us in ways, and then as we start to heal, mm -hmm. we don't feel it as much but they haven't truly left us. You can never break that soul bond. Wow. Um, wow, I, you know, um, I'm, I'm, Well, is there somebody that took their own life? Who's that? You know the rules. Someone, do you know someone that actually took their own life? Okay. Wow. Could you come in here, please? It'll be okay. It'll be fine. I wasn't expecting to be pulled out from behind the wall. <laughs> okay, so. Are you Amy? Who's Amy? I'm Amy. Oh, you're Amy. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. You just came up with a name, Amy? Hey, well, uh, who's Amy Winehouse? That's a girl that died, right? But her, okay, I'm leaving. I'm, Amy not, I'm not talking I'm to Amy you no Weiner. more. I can't, I can't talk to you no more. Amy Weiner. Okay. Weird. All right. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. I'm uncomfortable. <sighs> oh my God. Like, how would she have known that? Like, it was amazing. That was completely mind blowing. You get out my house. <laughs> All right. It's a wrap. Teresa's leaving. We're not. She's gonna say one more thing. I can't. That is. I think I peed on myself. <laughs> <laughs> Being that I was born and raised in Hicksville, my family has always been about the mom and pop shops. Hello, how Hi. are you? Caitlin? Yes. Hi, I'm Teresa. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So you heard about my big adventure that yeah. I wanted to? You want to be a barista for a I day? do. I love coffee. There's a new coffee shop in my neighborhood. You betcha I'm stopping by and checking out their coffee. I thought it would be really cool if I could, like, create my own drink, what do you think? Yeah, what kind, what do you usually like? Do you like cappuccino, latte? I love a latte with like almond milk? Yep. So we could just do plain latte, almond milk. What do you think <laughs> we could call it? Uh, let's think. The hmm. Teresa Chino? We could do that. Right? Teresa Chino, look at you. <laughs> this is the great thing about a mom and pop place. This girl is actually letting me behind the counter to make my own drink. A huge chain would never let me behind the counter. All right, so you're going to put this right in there. You have over. to feel it lock in. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. I'm a natural. Now you're going to press your double shot. I don't know how to use an espresso machine. Oh, this is getting very frothy. <laughs> Whoa. I know how to work a regular coffee pot. You know, a little percolator, you plug it in, and it perk, 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 perk. That's what I got. Do you like cinnamon? Yes. Do you like almond milk? Yes. You're going to love the Teresa Chino. It's going to be amazing. Yes. Do you want a medium? Can I get a large? <laughs> no? So a Teresa Chino is two shots of espresso, almond milk, and cinnamon. And of course, it only comes in one size, a medium. Would you like to try the Teresa Chino? Yes. Sure, have one. Strong. 
So you like it, right? I love it. It's great. Oh, okay. You're not too fond of it. Too strong. Too strong. But you were gonna be nice. No, I was gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, but I beat you to it. You know, I'm Teresa. I'm able to connect with people that have crossed over. So, who lost the husband? Unfortunately, you lost your husband. How do you connect with the month of August? It's my birthday. August is is your birthday. Is this your dad? Yeah. Oh, come over. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. This is this is your brother? Yeah. And this is your mom? Yeah. Oh, so know how proud your dad is of you. Yeah. Very proud of you. My name is Caitlin, and I am one of the owners here at the Bayshore Bean. My dad was such a cool guy, but I didn't appreciate it until I lost him. You know, I look back now, he played the bongos on the beach. I'm like, what is he doing? This is so embarrassing. But now I look back, I'm like, you were cool, because you know what, you did what you wanted and you didn't care what people thought, you know, which is a beautiful thing. But was your husband ill prior to his departure? I felt like there was something wrong, but he like blocked me from it and kind of kept me at a safe distance. So whether if he didn't tell you he didn't. what was going on, he says, I need to take responsibility for that. How do you connect with the month of October or the 10th of a month? His birthday is October 11th. To validate for you that he takes responsibility, do you understand that? And he hears when you speak to him. You wear your dad's necklace or do you have his necklace? I have his necklace. I'm actually wearing it right now. Oh, perfect. To validate that your dad doesn't want you to stop living your dreams because of his departure. Did you feel that you saw your father in the house? Know that it is his way of letting you know that he's okay. Nine years ago, my father passed away from cirrhosis of the liver. And I just remember feeling like hollow, you know, like a piece of me was gone, you know. When you opened up this place, did you say, Dad, am I doing the right thing? Show me a sign that it's going to be okay, that I'm not crazy, and that I shouldn't be doing this. Your father says you are going to succeed in life because you love what you do. Thank you. I never got to tell him how much I loved him or how much he meant to me. But him seeing this, he could see the influence he had on me. It's honestly one of the best feelings to know that he can see me, you know? Well, where does the car accident come in? My, uh, my ex-boyfriend. It's okay. So he was hit? Walking across the street with me. Your father told me that you live your life filled with guilt. And you say that should have been me. Your boyfriend, he says, we were just walking. Yeah. It was a freak accident, correct? Yeah. He says, nobody blames you. Do you understand <laughs> that? Do you understand that? Four years ago, my boyfriend passed away in a tragic accident. Every day I carry guilt with me on what happened. Who wouldn't, you know? You're there. Your person you love is there, and it happens, and you live. How are you going to feel, you know? He says, you should not feel guilty. I know this is hard for people to hear, but I was made to feel like sometimes someone's purpose in life is to save someone else. He always said that to me. To validate for you that he's not angry. He's not upset. It was New Year's Eve, and we were walking across the street, and I turned around, and that was it. I always question if he's mad at me, because if we would have died to together, I wouldn't have felt how I felt. I would always be with him forever. He says, I want to thank you, because he showed me you in the back of a church lighting a candle. That's yeah. my symbol for <laughs> where someone does things in memory, and no one knows, correct? Yeah, no one knows. So you know that when you did that, his soul was with you. 
So if he was angry, upset with you, or mad at you, he wouldn't be coming through and giving you this gift of peace. Yeah. Oh my God, is this real? Am I like living? Is this real life? Oh. I need in the coffee shop hearing from my dead people. Like this cannot be real life. So you know that your father is bringing him forward to give you that amazing gift of being able to release that burden and guilt of feeling responsible for your boyfriend's departure. I still feel like I'm dreaming. I didn't know that someone would be, ever be able to verify that they're actually there watching over me. Um, I needed to hear that today, definitely. Today, I'm meeting Kim Zolziak for a reading. Better not be tardy. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Look at how good you look. Aw, thank you. I am Kim Zolciak Bierman, and this is my husband, Corey Bierman, and we are from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm originally from the Housewives of Atlanta, and then I got my own spinoff called Don't Be Tardy. I've played in the NFL for uh, the Atlanta Falcons for the past eight years, and I'm currently a free agent. You look gorgeous. Thank you. So do you. You're so fit and everything. I'm trying to stop the aging process. Well, then I better get to the gym. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Teresa, like obsessed. I would have traveled anywhere in this world to meet her, so I'm super excited. A little nervous, but really excited. Um, I am going to just say this to you. There is a lot of energy in this room it's here today. It's crazy. There's a lot of energy. Ooh. So I don't even know where to begin. There are at least 12 souls that are willing to channel today. So, um, are you afraid that someone's going to come through? Mm -mm. There was also someone with the head injury as well, or something with the with the head. Well, possibly. Well, I've I guess. had some friends pass. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's the main one that you're thinking about. Is that correct? With the head. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was made to feel like that they they wanted to take responsibility for their actions or choices, okay. and they're and they're young, so that's my symbol for that they left the physical world before we feel their time. Casey was a really good friend of mine. We grew up in the same town, went to all grades of school together. It was a small town, 3,000 people, everybody knew everybody, and so your friends were a very close-knit group of friends. Casey was definitely a wild child. Um, he had a really goofy sense of humor, um, kind of a cowboy, you know, he, he rode horses and, and roped, and then he played football, and I mean, he just kind of was the, the average kid growing up in that area. Uh, do you know someone that died in a car accident? There was some type of ejection or someone was hit. Casey was ejected and, and that's how he died. We were young, we were young, you know, we were seniors in high school. We had three best friends. It was me, Casey, and Corey. We graduated and he died like a week later. He just said to me that you were left with a burden and or guilt that is, I should have been there. Maybe if I did this or I could have done that, it could have been a different result. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Could have been there. Yeah. He was at a little get together kind of outside of town and um, I was supposed to go, but ended up not going. I feel a lot of guilt uh, for, for his situation. Um, you know, losing him and him not being around it's hard to grasp that, you know, that person's, you know, gone. You're never going to talk to him again. You're never going to see him again. And so it definitely did change my life. He says, I don't want you to feel that if you were there, that things could have or would have been different. What might have been different maybe would have been your burden. And it would have been far more greater if you were there. Does that make sense? Mm hmm I know he wasn't supposed to be here. But your experience today is exactly why you're here, mm -hmm. was for that. Mm -hmm. Is your life always about everybody else? Every day. I feel like I'm looking at you, because this is your experience, and they're having me look everywhere yeah. else to give someone a reading. Mm -hmm. That's me. But it validates your, your personality. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and there's a sister here. So, um, I want to talk about the... Is there someone in there that understands that? Hello? Over there. They're telling me they want me to talk about the young female. 
Oh, I know exactly. Nikki, are you in there? My name is Nikki. I am Kim Zolciak's hairdresser for the last 14 years. We came with Kim so she could meet Teresa and have a reading and um, had no idea this was gonna happen today. They had me write sister. Um, my best friend died. Okay, she was like your sister. Yes. She says, oh, wait, she talks very fast. She's like me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like, I'm like, wait, I thought I talked fast. I'm like, I need to coffee up a little bit more. <laughs> she does. Yeah. She shows me that you never left her side. She shows me I'm at the bedside. I'm, you're holding her hand. Yeah, I was there with her when she died. And so I can hear angels singing. So were you playing music when she died? We were playing, we were playing Josh Groban and those angel songs and angel, an angel CD, yeah. I moved from Chicago to Atlanta in 95, and the first friend I made was Danielle. We worked together. We did everything together. She got married. I was in her wedding. She had a baby. I was there when he was born. She was a really cool person. And she says, I want to thank you for dropping everything, putting your life on the back burner for my son. Is her, is where, how do you connect with the mom? I'm now her, the mother, the mother of her, her son. children. Yeah. Perfect. Look, how did she know that? Because that's so crazy. So you understand putting your life on the back burner for her. Yeah. Yeah, she was sick for three years. She shows me that you never <sighs> left her side. And you told her time and time again mm. that you would take care of everything. It's been 13 years since Danielle has passed away from stage four melanoma. She was told that she was probably not gonna live a year after this, after we found out that she had, you know, stage four. And she was so determined to live to see Julian grow up that she knew she wasn't going to. She fought really hard and she said she was gonna at least make it to his third birthday. She died the day after. She had mentioned that if anything ever happens to me, you have to help Julian. And I feel true to what I told her. I am taking care of her son and raising him the right way, and I have no regrets. I adopted him once he was 10 so he could understand what was going on. But he's always been, I mean, he's my son. He's not a stepson or anything, you know? He's great. So were you going to make a quilt out of her clothing for her, her son? T-shirts. <laughs> we just pulled all these T-shirts out because we didn't want to get rid of her clothes. The thought of yeah. wanting to do something like that yeah. means the absolute world to her. It means as if you actually did it. Mm -hmm. She's watching over him from heaven. She says, I want you to know that you exceeded every and any expectation that I ever would have had of you. Well, yeah. And that she's OK. I've always wanted that validation. She said that, you know, she thinks I'm doing a good job and that's more important to me than anything. I'm gonna start with the mother figure for you. Okay. So um, your mom's still here in the physical world? Yes. Okay. So know that it would be your grandmother, very, very strong soul. Mm -hmm. She talks, your grandmother talks, she goes, all right, enough of that. <laughs> just walk by right this. Side. She don't care. She just walked by, <laughs> she just walked by, right I go, you just walked in front of all the other dead people. She goes, I don't care about them. <laughs> Hey, ma'am. But that would be her. Mm -hmm. Did she have a nickname for you? Mm -hmm. I don't know what the nickname is, because I went to call you Monique. She says, I didn't call her Monique, so don't you call her Monique. Mm -mm. I had a special nickname for her, so I'm like, what is it? She's like, you're not going to get it. I'm like, OK. <laughs> yes, she did. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Before anybody knew I was Monique, my grandmother did. Mm. Before anybody applauded for me, but if anybody told me I was special, it was my grandmother. She let everybody know I was the favorite. She was unapologetic about it. You know, like most people like, I don't have no favorite. She let them know, Nikki, Nikki, I love her. The rest of y'all, I mean, you know, I'm your grandmother, but Nikki, though I can feel my grandmother, I haven't had a chance to hear her. So I knew that if I came and talked to Teresa, that maybe, I would get a chance to hear her. She tells me that she guides you. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have like a sitting chair in your bedroom or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see her sitting right in that sitting chair to validate for you that her guidance is always there. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. With my grandmother, mm -hmm. is she there all the time? Not when you're showering and having intimate moments. Okay, Teresa, <laughs> I wanted to check now because there's some things I don't need my Mimi to see, baby. That's why I'm like, let me check. People always <laughs> ask that. Absolutely not. Okay. Well, listen, okay? Now, I'm a newlywed. Though I've been married for 10 years, I'm still on the honeymoon. And there's some things I don't choose for Mimi to be in the room seeing, and there are chairs in the bedroom. And it's a, 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 a chaise, two chairs, then it's a sitting room, sugar. When I'm honeymooning, I don't need you in there, Mimi. Um, oh, let me ask you this. Do you have a piece, or you have something of an heirloom? Yes. Yes. I don't know how you obtained it, however, but I don't feel that it was so easy to do. Does that make sense? It wasn't. She made me feel like it wasn't even of anything of value. It had no monetary value whatsoever, but the value of what it meant to you meant everything because it meant so much to her. That heirloom is my grandmother's wedding ring. And she had to go into the hospital one time. She had gotten really sick. And we had to remove her jewelry. And that ring was so hard to come off because she had had it on for almost 50 something years. So we had to work to get this ring off. And once I got it off, she looked at me and said, I don't ever want to put, I don't need that no more, baby. Now the wedding rings may cost about $22. But they so special, because to wear those rings, you got to know you got to carry a mighty stick, baby, because that ring belonged to Lillian Easley. So when spirit steps forward and they show me the holding of the hands and the whispering of the ear, that is my symbol for that we feel we did not get the opportunity to say goodbye. I wasn't there when my grandmother died. OK. So, but you were always there for her. Mm-hmm. You should tell me you were working? Mm-hmm. So know that she says, because I wouldn't have had it any other way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this, but I think you know this. She said to me, there's no way I could have let go if she was there. Mm. So know that this is your grandmother's way of validating for you that nothing was left unsaid. Mm. But more importantly, everything that you say to her, she hears you. Wow. Validating that she is watching over. My grandmother went to her next journey seven years ago. And I did not attend the funeral. I had no plans on it. Because we sat on her bed one night and we held hands and we said, whoever go first, no sad tears. I see you on the other side. And we stuck to it. I've not cried one sad tear for my grandmother since she, I've cried, but not of any sadness. Just of, I was so grateful of the moments I had with that woman named Lillian Easley. Hmm. Okay, so this is where they come. You know famous people that died? Yes. No, I knew Richard Pryor. Did you go to attend his funeral? I did. Did you speak at the funeral? Yes. Okay. Because he told me that he wanted to thank you for what he, you did for his family. I understand that. See, at that funeral that day, it was so thick. Yeah. And it was so separate. Mm-hmm. So when I got up there, I spoke on the separation. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was speaking. I don't think I was in charge of what the words were coming out, but they were just coming. See, this is the thing. We do things in our life every day that I don't think we realize the impact that we have on people. Yes. And that's what he's thanking you for. To be a part of Richard Pryor's memorial was surprising because I didn't feel like I had earned the right to speak at such greatness, about such greatness. So when Jennifer Pryor said, Monique, would you speak? It took me aback. You're talking about a little fat black girl from Baltimore, Maryland, baby, that I don't deserve to be in that group. But she said to me, wow. She said, Monique Richard talked about you all the time. And I said, okay. <laughs>
Um, so I asked your grandmother, I said, what was the purpose of Richard Pryor coming forward for? And she said it was another reminder for Monique to never stop doing what she's doing. Mm. Richard Pryor is partly responsible for my freedom on the stage. I met him at the premiere of The Kings of Comedy. And this one, he was in the wheelchair, and the MS was really taken over. And I went over to him because it was like, wow, this is Richard Pryor. And when I went to grab his hand, he pulled me in close as if I want you to come down so I can say something in your ear. And that man said to me in my ear, don't you ever change. If that's not validation, I don't know what is. And I've had people to say to me, Monique, that mouth of yours, it won't get you far in this industry. You cuss too much, oh, oh. I remember what one of the greatest comedians to ever do it said, don't you ever change. So it changed my life. Good morning. Good morning. I'm exhausted. All that racket outside last night? Racket outside? I was looking outside and looking around. I was. And instead of saying, Larry, Larry, I think there's somebody out there, you're like, let me go down and investigate? I, I didn't know if there was somebody out there. I just heard something. I didn't know if it was a raccoon. I heard something in the backyard. It woke me up, and I came downstairs to see what it was. I wasn't thinking, wake up, Larry. But if something like that happens again, please wake me. And what are you going to do? More than you're going to do, that's for sure. Let me see you throw a punch. Well, I can't make a fist because of my nails. That's not good. You can't make a fist? No, so I would go like if this. If you were to punch me, how would you punch me? Right now, my go-to defense would be, what? Okay. Ow. And my nails. <clears throat> I don't have any defenses because, like, All right, so if I go, <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> I beat my Say? I beat my Get nails. Defenses. I can be like a. <laughs> <laughs> so take a class. You think I should take a class? Yeah, I think so. Why not? Maybe I think it's a good idea. Teresa should take a self-defense class. I'm not with it 24-7. You're naturally strong. Yeah, but I could be like a strong speller. It's not going to help me in this right. situation. <laughs> S-T-O-P. <laughs> what would you do if I was like, hey, mister? Or yes, probably so help. Ow! <laughs> Uncle, uncle, uncle. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to a self-defense class and I'm bringing along my friend Sharon. I don't know what to expect, but I have a really good feeling about this. They look very defending. It's like intimidation. It looks like everybody knows how to defend themselves but me. Hey there. Hi. Hey. I'm Jesse. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Teresa. Nice to meet you, hey, Teresa. Hi, Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Spirit can do a lot of things, but I need to learn my own moves so I can defend myself physically. Today, guys, some basic self-defense stuff. Okay. So two hands on the neck, okay? First thing we're gonna do, guys, is my shoulders are gonna come up to my ears. My right hand is gonna lift straight up to the ceiling like this, and I'm gonna turn hard the opposite way. From here, hold back elbow. Right to the face. Right to the face. Okay, guys, let's partner up. <laughs> so you're really not gonna hurt me, right? <laughs> let's do it, guys. Okay. Front choke number one. Let's go. Up, turn. Good. Oh, that was good, right? That's it. And, and then I'm gonna elbow. give you an elbow. And then maybe if I didn't put this deodorant way. on, you'd faint from the smell. <laughs> Take that and that. Get away from those jeans. I saw them first. Boom. <laughs> Ow, I hurt back. Twist hard yeah. all the way and push it. Now go. Push, 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 push. Ooh, you're a big man. I got you down. That's it. So watch, guys. Now, same position from the back, OK? Back choke. Shoulder comes up, arm comes up. My right foot steps back. I turn and wrap. Now I can step in. One, two. Strike how I like. Oh, oh my god. He... One more time. I wasn't nice... expecting One more time. <laughs> nice and easy, guys. Did you know he was going to do that to you? Did you know, Joe? Did That's I give it away? Terrible. Here, step in. Two. Strike, strike. Good, thank you, Joe. Let's go, guys, up with the same partners. Let's do it. They were like serious with the attacking, and let me tell you something. Self-defense is hard. The moves aren't hard, but what's hard is because I really don't want to hurt this person. So I'm like kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place over here.
Go like this. Right, right. Nice. Nice. That's it. So, you know, I'm a medium, so I'm able to connect with people that have crossed over. So where does the mother energy come in? That's the question. Because I keep hearing, wow. excuse me, that's my son. And I said, well. <laughs> my name is Tom, and I'm from West Islip, New York. I miss my mom very much. I was about 28 years old when my mom passed from uh, breast cancer. Did you used to buy her clothes? Yeah. Because she goes, he always bought me nice clothes, and I still see the tags on them. <laughs> Spirits never said this. She goes, please tell him I loved everything that he ever bought for me. And I said, well, why would you say That's that? Because she showed me the closet and I saw all the tags of the clothes that you bought. And she says, I don't want him to think that I didn't like what he bought. Right. Well, when I cleaned out the house after she passed, I, there was a lot of tags on the clothes. It's wild. You have the picture of you and her before she got sick? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I have it right here. Do you want to see it? Oh, I'd love to see. Because she goes, that's how I want you to remember me. Oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. I carried this picture. Oh, that's my amazing. God. Oh, God, look how beautiful. Thank you. Oh, and you carry this? Yeah, that's oh. amazing. Well, that's how she wants you to oh, remember her. Yeah. The photo that I had in my bag that she did not see, did not know about it, was an old picture of my family when I was very little. I look at that picture every day. Do you feel that you did not get the opportunity to say goodbye to your mother? Yeah. Because she says, I need you to know that what you said to her, her soul was present and doesn't want you to feel that you weren't there for her in her hour of need. Yeah, she was in a coma. Was it like seven days? Or what was she was, yeah, for a week. She was in a coma. And then she woke up for a little while and went right back into it. She said, I woke up to say goodbye. Wow. That's, you got me a little choked up there. Mm -hmm. My mother woke up full of life. And then she just said to me after a while, I'm, I'm a little tired. I'm going to go to sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. And then she just went back into the coma. And uh, that was that. And then she passed away the next day. Your mom wants you to know how proud she is of you. Right. And that with everything that you do, she's a part of. That soul bond is never broken. Wow, thank you. That is amazing. Having Teresa talk about how proud my mom was, it was pretty amazing. My mom always told me, stick to your dreams, because a lot of people didn't believe in my martial arts when I was younger. So she made sure she told me how much she loved me and how proud she was of me. <laughs> go down, go down on this knee. On the this other. knee? Yeah, grab her in a forearm choke. Now, all you're gonna what do- What are you doing? Grab her here. You're crazy! Grab her here. Now lean forward, and she's gonna um, fall right oh, over. Okay. So throw her. Ah! Nice, oh! that was good. Nice. You're crazy! Get away from me! She's crazy! I did not expect to learn so much in one class. As long as I bow after hurting someone, it's all good in the hood. Just bow. Great. Domo arigato. We say domo arigato means thank you. Right, Good training, go. everybody. Awesome. Good job. Oh, you're cleaning up all the dishes. Hey! Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm Punch me in the face. I don't attack me like that. I took my self-defense class. Oh, my jaw. What's that? I'm just because I, I hurt you, and that's what you're supposed to do when you don't intentionally mean to hurt somebody. I'm like a natural at self-defending myself. I had no idea. I believe. Go ahead, go back at the sink. Listen, da, da, da. don't make me nervous. You're a victim. <laughs> and then, no, no, Larry! That's not how, you know, stop being an idiot. That's what? how you attack Come somebody. On. How do you attack somebody? I never attacked anybody. I know, that's what, just go like this. Just go like that, just, just, just hold that. So you go like this, like that, and you go, mm, mm. That. that was pretty good. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Um, having Teresa in my home today to have a private reading in the hopes of connecting with my husband, Keith. Um, so I just invite you to relax, enjoy, but more importantly, embrace the most amazing and beautiful messages from spirit. Thank you. Um, were you afraid that your husband wasn't gonna come through? Your husband's soul is present. My husband, Keith, was an amazing father, an amazing husband. I miss my husband every day. He was my best friend. But also, every day I look at the kids and I just think, I can't get over how unfair it is for them. And every day I miss him that he's not here. And I cry and I yell at him. You know, he's supposed to be here for them. He's supposed to be there for us. 
I don't know what this means. Okay, how do you connect with like the nautical star? Do you have like a tattoo of that? That was his tattoo. Got it about six months before he passed away. Got it right here. And were you thinking of getting <laughs> yes. the same tattoo? And nobody knows. So you know that your husband, his soul hasn't left you. When Teresa brought up the nautical star, I was actually thinking about getting a replication of that, a, a smaller one. And the fact that that came through and she knew that just blew me away because, you know, yes, his friends knew he had a tattoo, but how would Teresa know he had a tattoo? Do you connect with birds with your husband oh as well? Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was a bird watcher. Cause I didn't know, his I saw like a hawk. His license plate was pigeon hawk. Hawks are his favorite bird. He used to go bird watching. And I'm like, I think I saw a hawk. I'm like, who sees hawks? Do you ever see a hawk flying over oh, your house? Yeah. Yep. So you know that's him watching. Not only did she pick up on him being a bird watcher, she said hawks, and hawks were his favorite bird. He would go down to Cape May every year for a hawk watch. That just absolutely blew me away. Did you separate his cremains? Oh, was he cremated, I should ask you. Yes. Oh, and okay. <laughs> yes, yes and yes. So, because then what he showed me was like, I feel like I have like a little urn, but then I spread some in the ocean, and then if I buried some. Yes, that's exactly what he did. And you saved some for the children as well? Yes, nobody knows that either. Not even my kids. So you know that your husband supports everything that you do. It took me two years to actually decide to bury some of his cremains because the children did want a tangible place to go visit their dad. And we went down to the area that we always took our boat out of and we sprinkled his ashes. And I also saved part of his cremains, which is something that nobody knows. And your husband just said to me, he says, Teresa, it's all been completely unexpected. I was sitting at work and my cell phone rings and it's somebody saying that they're a New York City cop and they found my husband and I need to come into the hospital immediately. I get to the hospital and I can't figure out what's going on. A doctor comes out and he said, you know, we did everything we could. There were no signs that my husband was sick. He was 42 years old. My husband passed on a subway platform in New York City uh, from a massive heart attack. He actually shows me you sitting with his physical body after he died. Yes. And you cannot believe that he had died. Yes. Because he keeps showing me you, like, saying, just wake up. You, how could you be dead? Yes. It became real to me when I asked to see him, and they brought us into the hospital room where he was. And I do remember when they told me that he was gone that I knew I was screaming because I do remember thinking, oh my God, somebody's screaming. Not realizing that it was me that was screaming. And then I just kept thinking that I had to go home and tell the kids. <laughs> How do you tell your kids this? So now, was there a trip that you discussed taking the kids on? Yeah, I took the kids on a trip about six months after he passed. We had to get out of here. He goes, to... and the kids had the best time. The best time. The mm. best time. And he says, and I know how hard that was for you. Yes. How you watched with sunglasses, and you watched them have a good time as you cried, feeling that your husband was missing out. Yes. So know that your husband did not miss out. Know that his soul was with you. Okay. So, I don't know, were you thinking about going back on the vacation? So I feel similar but different. I know that's yes. awesome. <laughs> that's... Like I feel like if you went to Atlantis, like now you go into like beaches. Oh my or... god, we went to Atlantis. That was our first vacation. Now we're doing an all-inclusive. It's not beaches, but we're doing an all-inclusive. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so know that he supports you with all of the vacations. We spent the weekend boating 
the weekend before he passed away. And my kids think they're lucky that, you know, they didn't see their dad suffer. And they had such an amazing weekend with him that weekend. So all their memories of my husband are good memories. Do you still have a trunk? Yes. <laughs> because he shows me, is your son very interested in the stars, astrology? Yes. Does he have a telescope? I don't know. He um, or does has he just... my husband's telescope. And when you were talking about the trunk, that's what's in the trunk, the telescope. And about a month before he passed, he would set it up and the two of them would go outside. Does he always ask to do things that his, him and his dad did? Sometimes. But then I think he doesn't want to ask me because he knows I'm going to get upset. Because your husband's telling me to go get the telescope out of the trunk. I was recently kind of cursing out the trunk because I feel guilty because I should really take the telescopes out and do this with Joseph, but I don't know how he's going to react because I'm not dad. And I can try to be dad, but there are just some things that I can't do with him. Your husband says, stop saying that you can't do this. He says, you can and you are. To hear that he approves of everything that I've done since he's passed is great because every decision I make, I think that, you know, it's unfair that I have to do this by myself. I hope this experience helps you uh, be able to know that with every breath and milestone that your family takes, your husband is guiding you from heaven. Thank you. This is amazing. Hey, Dad. Hi, Trey. What's up? Oh, I, I'm nervous. This morning, I was invited to be a celebrity guest at a huge gala charity event here on Long Island. So I'm a bit of a wreck today. I'm getting, getting nervous just thinking about it. I don't like big crowds still. I mean, I get nervous. Don't panic. You'll be all right with that. They invited me, hoping that because I'm a quote unquote celebrity, that I would be able to get people to buy tickets. First of all, I do not see myself as a celebrity. So this is crazy. Second of all, my dad knows that I get major anxiety with huge crowds. Thousands of people are there. All right, you know what? The place is a great big place. People are not going to come and crowd around you where you're going to go, oh, you know, I got to get out of here, you know? Is I got it, my, uh, you know, I'm getting my do? anxiety. Yeah, you go crazy. God, you go crazy. Years ago, I used to struggle with being in crowds, getting in an elevator, and driving too far from my house. She had fears like you could not believe. When she get in the car, she had to sit in the front by the door or have the window open because she started to get anxieties and then she'd breathe out the window or stop the car, stop the car, I gotta get out. Dad, I didn't even go to my senior prom because I was too scared. You had close up to phobia like. Yes. And didn't like to be with a crowd of people or whatever and you started to get panic attacks. Well, what do you think's gonna happen at this ball thing? You're over that now. You don't do that stuff no more. I, I don't know. I just, I have a hard time with that. I you mean, don't have no hard time no more. You got over all your, all your damn fears. Forget about your anxieties when you start talking with people. Once I became aware that a lot of my anxiety was from sensing and feeling spirit, I learned how to harness it and turn it into something positive. And Long Island Medium helped me bring my gift to a completely different level. Well, I guess I could look at a bright side. All the money goes to breast cancer right here on Long Island. That's great. That's what's helping me get over my fear of this. This is very important for you to be there and to support this whole thing, to help them out. You're right. Really? My grandmother and mother-in-law are both breast cancer survivors, and I recently had a scare of my own. So I think it's important to put whatever lingering anxieties I have aside and support this cause. I'll be able to support breast cancer here on Long Island, right? Right. And I get, and I get a new dress. There you go. I'll get something simple, just like me. Yeah, Plain simple like you. And simple. Between $500 to $1,000 <laughs> dress, right? <laughs> plain and simple. Yeah, plain and simple. <laughs> I'm running on adrenaline at this point, and that's the problem. Take a deep breath. Probably make Just it I got breathe. No mask. We can go, I don't know, we got like two bars on the thing. We got like a bar left. Listen, it's not my car. You should, you know. We run out of gas, we run out of gas. Today's the big day, and I brought my cousin Lisa with me to help me pick out my dress for tonight's big event. 
I got the RWA. What's that? Riddle with anxiety. <laughs> Listen, your life has changed. It's a whole different world for you here now. Wow. Now I'm going to Gallas. I need to stay 100% focused on the gala. <gasps> I'm getting distracted. I'm not getting distracted. OK. Gala, 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 gala. So I called ahead to the store, and the saleswoman, Fran, she knows how I am, that I get easily distracted. So she picked out a couple of dresses for me. Oh, my god. I, I don't know. What do you think? This is not like the style I, dress that I would typically wear. You don't like it? No, I mean, I, I feel like you have to. You have to just give it oh a minute. God, I, love the shoes. I don't know what it is. It looks beautiful. It on looks you. beautiful yeah, it really on does. you. It, like, yeah. Perfect. You think? I mean, the color looks but beautiful. But I feel like. What, what do you call it? Make it more gala like? Gala like. Can you make it more gala like? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a word? The yeah, typical black. Okay. Why? Why do you look at me like that? What? I do like the pink one better. I'm going to come out. But you have to keep in mind, I need a little alteration. Is this it? I don't know. I don't know. Tell this me is yes. it. Oh my god. I'm saying yes. yes. Okay. All right, this yes. is it. Larry, you downstairs? Yeah. Can you close your eyes? All right. What if I don't look good enough for the ball? Don't look yet. Don't look. Close your eyes. Not looking. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, you can turn around. Oh, I love that dress is gorgeous. Wow, she looks stunning. I am, I'm speechless. I mean, this is the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen in my life. I love the shoes. Well, you yeah. look very handsome. They're gonna be like paparazzi there, or just like press? Larry, I have no idea. We're pulling around the corner. And this is out of control. Yeah, these people are coming from all over. I think it's like 2,500 people are gonna be there. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> do you have to remind me how many people are gonna be there? Hon, I don't wanna say anything stupid. I say, I say, I say, I say stupid things. How are you, Larry? Good, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I gotta fix Larry. myself. Pleasure. I was sitting in the car. I gotta, I gotta fix myself. <laughs> well, I'm very Welcome nervous because we've Hollywood never Hall. been to anything like this before, so I'm yeah, very, very nervous. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Teresa. What brings you here, Teresa? Uh, you know, um, I am a Long Islander. Oh my God, I feel like a fish out of water right now. I mean, I'm about to have an anxiety attack. Number one, I am not a celebrity. And number two, I hate being in crowded places. This is the cutest couple oh, in I person. I can't it. even tell <laughs> I love it. I love seeing that. Listen, it's like, it's I like put 31 day. years into this. Yeah. <laughs> and so what brings you to the Long Island Hospitality Ball? We were invited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. I never know what's going to come out of my mouth. Tell us a little bit of why you decided to say yes to this, because you get invited to a lot of things. But why yes to this? You know what? First, I was like, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, who gets invited to a ball? I'm like, <laughs> I didn't get invited, never got invited to a ball before. Just being here, being interviewed, and photographers, and standing on this red carpet, I mean, is enough to fuel any anxiety attack. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice, nice to meet you. Yeah, Pleasure. Thank, Pleasure. Thank you so much for having us this year. It's an honor Thank to be you. here. Thank, Thank you. you. This yeah. is my first big thing I've ever been to. Whoa, 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 whoa. This? Yes! Are you kidding? I just need to stop announcing to people that I am the new kid on the block and start focusing on what this event is really about. Tell us, you know, a little bit about, are you, you know, the Carol Baldwin Breast Cancer this Foundation? Is amazing. Have this, has that affected you in any way, breast cancer? Uh, or? Yes, it has. Um, actually, uh, my grandmother, she was a survivor. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Larry's mom, uh, she's a breast cancer survivor as well. It's amazing how many incredible Long Islanders there are, including the two of you. Thank you for oh, lending your you. celebrity and your support because you brought in a lot of people here tonight. So, uh, have you ever been to a medium before? No, I haven't. Okay. okay. So, um, what happens is, as I give my speech to you, 
Your loved ones start to clear out my own personal thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and they start to replace them with signs and symbols of things that I've experienced here in the physical world to be able to relay messages to you. I see shadows and silhouettes, and more importantly, I feel an emotional bond that you shared with them. Um, so there is a mother energy that is stepping forward. Your grandmother departed? Yes. She says, these boys, somebody's got to keep them in line. Oh my God. And it's so funny. And she said, boys. Oh my gosh. There was a lot of boys. <laughs> um, um, how do you connect with the blood? I just tasted blood. So either someone passed from blood disease disorder or there was a lot of blood at the departure. My head doesn't stop. Okay, my, okay. You, you, my brother Tony must be coming through. He got shot in okay. the head. A lot of blood. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I feel, I feel very weird right now. I just feel like this electricity type feeling going through me right now. That's them. Because I have like the chills right now, like, you know? Because it's them acknowledging that soul bond. I had five brothers. My brother Tony uh, was the first to go, you know, when he was 25. He was shot and killed. My other brother, his name is Jerry, lost him when he was 33, and that was a drug overdose. All my brothers were my world, but um, my brother Dwight, his passing, you know, his sudden passing. I had a very difficult time. I just couldn't handle what had happened. And it's still very hard, it's still hard. I miss him every day, every day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't miss him. My brother that passed four years ago that's, he's basically the one that I am mm -hmm. struggling, mm -hmm. struggling with right. the most. You know, I'm really, really struggling with him. Okay. I feel like your one brother, that brother that passed four years ago, he's got a gift to gab, boy. Oh, he's yeah. Got a, he's a smooth talker. Yes, he is. He just said something to me, and I was like, ooh, hey. <laughs> what did he say? I don't know. <laughs> He, he was, he was, he like, was. I feel like he's a, he's, I don't want to say a play, like a. No, he's just but he's a, so funny. He's just like a smooth talker. Like yes. he can make you melt in yes. his hands. Yes, like everybody. by just. Everybody. Because he keeps trying to tell me he's famous. Yes, he is. He is famous. My brother Dwight was amazing. Bubbly, funny. Everybody thought, you know, that he would have been a comedian in his life. Um, he could be serious at times, but. He was always about family. His family always came first. Um, was, your, I, I, was your brother very the famous one? Yes. Did he like music? Uh, he liked old school music, though. Because he just brought out, like, I think he brought out, and he's doing, like, beatbox stuff. Boop, <laughs> boop. Is that it? Is that, <laughs> did, did I just do something really weird and stupid? <laughs> Okay, continue because you're on. You're on it. And he keeps going, hey, 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 Fat Albert, and he's oh shouting. Oh my God! I, I'm seeing like all like old school like yes. break dancing, yes. MC yes. Hammer, yes. like yes. All over the world, a lot of people know my brother as Heavy D, but I know him as Dwight. He was in a group called Heavy D and the Boys. One of the songs that he did back then was Now That We Found Love and he played in a lot of uh, different sitcoms. He appeared on Different World, The Tracy Morgan Show, he was on there as a regular. He did quite a few movies like Cider House Rules. We were all very, very proud of everything that he accomplished in his 44 years of his life, you know, from when the time that he started to the sudden passing. I miss my brother Dwight every single day. There's not a day that I don't go by and I don't cry or I, I think of him and I just wish he could be standing in front of me um, just so that I could hug him and tell him how much he means to me. He labored my breathing. Um, so, so who passed from the heart, lungs, or, or chest? When my brother passed away, um, he did have a difficult time breathing. Four years ago, my brother Dwight 
um, better known as Heavy D, to the world, um, was on tour in Europe. And when he came back, he wasn't feeling well. And the next day, which I, I can remember it like it was yesterday, he went to the store, and um, on his way back, the doorman um, saw him collapse. And I guess he was asking for help, saying that he couldn't breathe. By the time he got to the hospital or whatever, he, he had passed. It was a clot from DVT, deep vein thrombosis. And it all stemmed from flying on an airplane. He goes, you know, my sister does enough going over the way that I died. He said, and this is why my sister and my family has not been able to start to heal from my departure. Yes, exactly. He says, I want it to stop. He said, because it's not gonna change the fact, Teresa, that I died that day. So he says, what I need you to do is visualize me standing here. I want you to take all of this anger. I want you to visualize me standing there and you telling me and handing back to me all of these burdens and guilts because it's starting to change you as a person. It is. He says, and I will not have that. That's why the timing of your session now is so important. Timing is everything because you're ready to let it go. I've been very angry since my brother passed away. I'm, number one, I'm angry that he's not here anymore because of, you know, the DVT, you know, the thrombosis thing, because he hated to fly. I hated that, that that, that happened to him. And it was so sudden. I mean, there's not a day that I don't cry or I, it's still hard. I miss him every day. And I just wish he could be standing in front of me um, just so that I could hug him and tell him how much he means to me. He says, and I know that she feels, where's the justice? Yeah. How about justice knowing that your brother's soul is safe and at peace? Fair enough? Yes, absolutely. If his soul was not at peace, I would not have been able to hear it. Let that be enough. I was really happy to hear from my brother and all the things that Teresa was saying because she was point right there, dead on with everything. Last summer, I met with a couple to do a private reading here on Long Island that you never saw. Listen, not everyone that I sit down with believes or understands in what I do. But I don't mind, because spirit always validates their presence and gives us the messages that we need. Hi! Teresa! How are you? My name is Ginny. This is my husband, Tony. We're hoping to connect with our daughter, Lauren, today. Oh, you have a very beautiful home. Thank you. I'm skeptical of what Teresa does, because in today's world, there's con artists everywhere, and you're, you know, you're a little leery. If you do have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. An experience with spirit is always what we need, not what we want. So, um, all I heard was that somebody lost the child. Your daughter? Yes. How do you connect with the number four? Are there four other siblings? Yes. Yeah, we're a mixed bag. Oh, OK, because I, I, you know the beginning of the Brady Bunch when yeah. they show? <laughs> that, and I'm like, it. why are you show me the Brady Bunch? Yeah. We oh, yeah. have from it's the Brady previous Bunch. marriages. <laughs> oh, perfect. Lauren was the kind of daughter, I guess, uh, excuse me, every dad dreams of always cared about everyone more than her. It was everybody first and, and her last. She was just special, just a special girl. My relationship with Lauren was wonderful. I loved her from day one. There was no distinction between daughter, stepdaughter. She was my daughter. She was cremated, is that correct? Um, and she says, you wear the cremains? Yes. And then there was something about a bracelet. I feel like there's something with charms. Do, do you have that? She was actually going to wear it, and I said not to. And I have a necklace of ashes in my pocket. What, are you testing me? <laughs> Hide that necklace. Teresa's coming. Hide well, that bracelet. I just thought 
you know. Oh, perfect. So are her cremains in there? Yeah. Perfect. So this is her way to acknowledge and to validate that she supports what you did with her cremains. I had asked Lauren, uh, if, if Teresa can really contact you, bring up the necklace uh, with the ashes. She brought that up and the bracelet. Ah. But what do you, what can you say? It's just un unbelievable. <laughs> that, that was. She talks about hearts. Shami drew a picture of a heart with her initials in it. That's the tattoo. That's the tattoo all the kids got. This heart shape is actually her two letters, L. The it L looks the like a, it's, it, oh, it's, it's her initials, like but a, it made, it's made perfect. to look like a heart. To acknowledge and to validate that she knows everything that has been done in memory of her and really letting you know nobody will ever forget about me. Wow. That tattoo drawing was like almost identical to, to the tattoo itself. That was incredible. A friend of hers made it and they all got this tattoo and Teresa did it. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> it's amazing. So um, did your daughter have a rare illness or was it unique for her age? It was, uh, it was a rare illness. She had cystic fibrosis. Lauren was born with uh, cystic fibrosis. The mucus builds up in the lungs, creating a plug, making it harder to breathe. There's no cure. It's a death sentence, for lack of a better term. So it was, it was pretty tough, but it, it never got her down. She wants to go back to the day of her departure. She shows me you there. The moment you told her that it was OK to let go, is when she left. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I could feel and I could see the peace on her face as her soul left her physical body. You know, it wasn't any shock or surprise. We, we had discussed what, what to do and, and who was going to be there. I think the hardest part was knowing that I couldn't save her. <clears throat> But um, it was important to be there um, in the end, and, and that was something that will stay with us forever. She says, I would not have traded my life for another 30 years. She said, because what I experienced was a lifetime of love for me. Yeah. So know that she wants to thank you for the beautiful life that everyone gave her and always made her feel special, and more importantly, not sick. Yeah. As much love as she was surrounded here in the physical world, she, she's surrounded on the other side. Yeah. And is happy and is at peace. There's a sense of relief. Uh, she's not in, in any kind of pain any longer. She's free and happy. It was just a great experience, I'd say. Your daughter did a phenomenal job of validating that her soul is not missing out on anything. She's still a big part of our lives, loving, guiding, and protecting us from the other side. It feels good. It means that she's here. She's around. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're very welcome. I wish Ooh, you all the best of you. luck. I was a little skeptical going in, but no more. Uh, she really convinced me today. Teresa's unbelievable, just amazing. Thank you. Very Thanks nice again. meeting you. Bye-bye. When Larry and I were on the road in Philadelphia, we decided to check out South Philly, since it's known for being an Italian neighborhood. Couldn't ask for a nicer night. And what you didn't see when Larry and I were strolling around was we ran into a friendly game of bocce ball. Hey, guys. Uh, would it be all right if we play? Yep. You know okay. Yeah, I know a little bit. Oh, that's, <laughs> now we're in trouble. Oh! You guys look very serious. See, look, obviously I come with white sneakers. Right, but I'm wearing a baby and Yeah, she's wearing a baby and flip-flops. <laughs> I am not competitive, so. I'm not worried about this at all, because I know there's three things Italians could do, and that's cook, lay brick, and play bocce. Uh, uh, uh. Stop like in the name wow. of bocce. <laughs> that's a pretty good throw. 
I mean, come on, it's not that hard. All you have to do is get the big ball close to the little ball. Uh-oh. He laid that down so... Oh! All right, let's see how my Italian blood is. <laughs> oh, Larry! Come on, hon. <laughs> Listen, I was nervous competing against them, but I never said I didn't know how to play. <laughs> that was way too hard. Oh, oh. Yeah? Yeah, baby! Woohoo! Look, I grew up playing bocce ball, and let me tell you, I'm here representing Long Island. Today is gonna be the most Long Islandy reading ever. Is that even like a word? <laughs> At the Crescent Club, because I'm meeting up with freaking Rosie O'Donnell, people. Rosie O'Donnell right here, reading me and her. Crescent Club. Long Island extra large is sitting right here. No time to cry, nothing to fear. It's a Rosie O'Donnell, a little bit bigger than Teresa. What do you mean that's an insult? Don't call me fat. It's Teresa Caputo, Teresa Caputo show. Woo! She talks to dead people every day. She does it in a very, very Long Island way. She's Teresa, Long Island medium. How do you want your steak? Well, medium. It's <laughs> Teresa, the medium from Long Island. Kabow! My name is Rosie O'Donnell, and I'm an entertainer. I'm 54 years old. I grew up on Long Island, and I'm thrilled to be here. People know me for having a daily talk show and for talking about issues that matter, and sometimes that upsets some people. I do watch Long Island Medium, mostly because my BFF, Jeannie, is very, very into it. <gasps> Teresa Caputo! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! It's Rosie O'Donnell! Oh oh perfect! You? Wow, you are so buffed and tiny! How are you? Look at you! Ooh. I was very excited. I, I felt like I was seeing an old high school friend. Like, oh my God, we're gonna go see Teresa Caputo! Rosie O'Donnell is here! <laughs> Spirits, I'm with Teresa Caputo and Jeannie Weedy. Please show up! Oh, that works. Seeing Teresa Caputo, I was just feeling very, very high energy, kind of stressed out and nervous, but excited at the same time. Okay, so, um, you, have you ever been to a medium before? Yes, we've okay. been together and separate, and, and she's been to see you. I've seen you a couple times, but in oh. large forms oh, at like Westbury and things like oh, that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you're familiar with on how I read? Yes. Okay, so, um, oh. so you, um, okay, so I want to talk about the mom that's departed. She told me for a long time, though. That's mine. Oh, your mom's gone for some time? Since 73. Your dad also departed as well? Yeah, just recently. Oh, because I'm like, Who's hiding in the back? That's <laughs> quite accurate. <laughs> They're telling him to sit down. You, they don't want him <laughs> reading. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it's apt that he's hiding. He is doing his best to come through, but I do feel a shyness to your father. Yes. Because when he sits there, he pulls the hat over his eyes. When spirit does that, that's my symbol for that they were shy or they had a hard time expressing emotion. Was there a separation uh, between you and your dad? Because mm -hmm. he shows me like you sitting on a curb waiting for him and like him not showing up. I looked over at him and I caught him crying. Yeah. And I said to him, oh, I said, why, why are you crying? And he said, I just wish I was able to be there for my daughter when she really needed me. Mm. You know, these are the moments where I feel for a soul because he just doesn't know what to do. You know, and then, and then he looks at me and he's like, I just, I, I, did, I didn't know what to do. He says, I could barely pick up the pieces for myself. He says, and then I had to take care of a family. He says, and I didn't know how to do that. He said, I had no training in that. So know that your father wants to take this opportunity to say that he's sorry about that. He said, I did the best that I could. And it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. When I was 10 years old, my mom died of cancer. Actually, it was about five days before my 11th birthday. At the time, no one said the word cancer. It was 1973. So they told us that she had hepatitis. My father, I'm sure, was overwhelmed. There were five small children at home and a big Irish Catholic family, no one was talking about feelings. There's a big problem with alcohol in the family, and you know, he went through a, a time of that. 
My life went uh, like in The Wizard of Oz, where all the color was sucked out of it. Like, you know, I felt kind of like I was living a normal life, and then all of a sudden, it was devoid of everything. So I think it's what every kid wants to know, that um, the wrongs that were done to them by the adults in charge, um, that they are, that they're regretful. So um, you have like a mentor or somebody that departed? Yeah, her name was Pat, but I always called her Teach the Peach. She made me feel like though that you still honor her every day. So whether you think of her, she pops into your head. She says, when you feel as though you're alone, know that you're not. The people in the neighborhood raised me. The next door neighbor's mother, she got me my first bra. And there was a teacher who came through with Teresa today, Pat Maravel. I used to call her Teach the Peach. And she was the first person to say I love you to me. She was the first person to hug me. She was the first person to kind of love me back to life. Um, your mother just said something to me. She said, you are so supportive of your children. Mm. She says, you respect your children's choices and you've never tried to change them. She said, I want you to know that um, you are a great mom. She says, I'm so proud. I said to her, I'm not going to cry. It's going to be for you. And she's like, you wait. I'm like, it's going to be you, Weenie. I've raised four teenagers, and now I have a new baby. And you know, sometimes I don't know what to do, and I wish I had a mother to call to ask. And so that was a beautifully touching thing to hear. And as someone without parents that are living, um, it, it provided me with the kind of solace, I think. If I had chosen what I would want them to come through and say, it's exactly what happened. If I could have picked, you know, to have my mother say that she sees me parent and to have my father say that he realizes the effects of his actions, you know, those are the two things I think that uh, I've always wished, yeah. you know. So who's the young male that departed? My husband. Okay. So know that he's stepping forward. Um, and you still have his wedding ring? Did you bring it with you? Because he's like, he goes, Teresa, you can't see it. She hid it from you. I did. It's in my pocket. Oh, weenie. <laughs> she and told I, me she had something oh, in her. Oh, what a weenie. <laughs> yeah. We call her genie and weenie. She said she had something broken. in her pocket, but she didn't tell I me what it was. I can't wear it because it's broken in two. It broke a while Perfect. ago. Yeah, but I just stuck it in my pocket today. And you didn't know that. She didn't tell me. She said, I have something in I my pocket. I wouldn't tell her. My husband, Dan, was an angel. He was funny, he was kind, he was an incredible husband, an incredible father. Dan was diagnosed with a very rare form of, it's a soft tissue cancer called synovial sarcoma. And he survived three years, he battled with everything he had. Never once did he complain. Because this diagnosis was also a childhood diagnosis, many children battle this disease, he said, I will never complain when I'm sitting in Sloan Kettering with children next to me. <laughs> 